if I had to sum up my experience that I've had on a Survivor, it honestly would be amazing. Um, I mean, when do you get to go and not have to take a shower for 39 days or, you know, answer your phone or, I mean, you just, you, you get to be free and just literally do whatever you want to do. And, and as much judgment as there is out there, there's no judgment. And so it's really cool to just be able to, um, not have to live up to any standards for once. And, um, yeah, it's, it was awesome. And it was really like just relaxing as much as it's stressful. It's relaxing because you don't have those pressures of the real world, everyday stuff that we deal with. And literally you just sit back, relax and, and go wherever this road takes you. I think the tribe swap completely screwed my game over. Um, everyone else in the game was left with some sort of alliance except me. And uh, if that, if the tribe swap wouldn't have happened, I still would have been with Tony and Trish and Wu, and they're still in the game, and I would have been sitting right next to them. So the tribe swap forced me to make other alliances, otherwise I would have been voted out. And then once I made those other alliances, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place of, okay, strategically what's my best move, and um, I chose to stay with, you know, the 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 brains or the new Apari. I chose to stay with them because going over back with my original alliance would have been a lateral move and it wouldn't have been a forward move in this game. So um, it sucks. Yeah, I was the only one put in that position of, hey, you have to make a new alliance. Otherwise, that Tony, Wu, and Trish were my alliance from day like three, and it would have stayed that way. So. Um, that's where luck plays into Survivor. I mean, nobody knew how the swap was going to turn out. We drew buffs that were wrapped up. You couldn't peek. And it just so happened um, I was the unlucky one. And I was sent off on my own. But I still think I did a good job of battling through that and adapting to that situation and making it to the merge. You know, it, then at that point, it just was how the cards fell. And there really wasn't much I could do. Strategically, I think I made the the only move I could make, and that was to stay with the six. So the options I had was um, the five, new Apari, or go back with my original and join the five, new Solana. I was smack dab in the middle of that. And this is how I, you know, sifted through that is, okay, I, Regardless who I go with, I can be safe. But I'm not out here to get second or third place. I'm out here to win a million dollars. So if I move over to with the new Solana, uh, that's going to turn five people against me. And if there's eight people on the jury and five people won't vote for me, pretty much says I'm not winning. Okay, so that was ruled out. Um, so then when Tony had approached me to, to make that swap, you, I just looked at it as it's a lateral move in the game. And anyone who does make that swap is not, it's not a power move. It didn't advance you in the game. It, it's lateral. You're moving sideways just to a different tribe because if Cass would not have, you know, if she would have stayed with us six, she still would have been with us six you know, she still would have been in the game. So, um, like I said, it's making that move. I made rationally, I'm, I'm comfortable with the decision I made because it, if it would have worked, it was the best case scenario. Nobody can predict that Cass was going to do what she did. So, um, you know, and she's not the one that got me out. It took six people to get me out. It didn't take one vote. I think part of the reason that was so easy for me out here is because it's so much like my real life back at home. When I go to work, I get lied to every day. Out here on Survivor, you're lied to every day. You know, you sit down with a criminal to interview them or interrogate them, and you get this story and you're like, oh, okay, that sounds legit. 
But then you like say, hey, we're going to take a break. And you walk out and you talk to your partner who talked to the other criminal. And they tell a completely different story. And you're like, that's not what he said, you know. And so, yeah, I mean, it's exactly what it's like. Survivor and cops and robbers are like the exact same game, you know. And um, so, and then also the fact that when you get called to a situation, you never know what's going to happen. So being able to adapt to that environment immediately is key. And out here, you know, with that swap, okay, I got to adapt right away. So I would say it was very close to my real life, like trying to read people, trying to figure people out and uh, trying to sift through all the BS to get down to what the truth is. And um, I think I did a pretty good job at it. I just ended up, you know, getting blindsided.